from the UW Milwaukee Panther Arena in downtown Milwaukee, Wisconsin. It's the Major Arena Soccer League today, the Milwaukee Wave hosting the St. Louis Ambush. And a pleasant good afternoon, everyone, wherever you may be. Tom Witt, along with former Wave Team Captain Tenzin Rampa, as we greet you from the black turf of Panther Arena. Well, Tenzin, a rematch between a couple of Eastern Division rivals here today. Game four of a five-game series between the Wave and the Ambush. Milwaukee took the first two down in St. Louis, but the Ambush, for the first time ever, defeated Milwaukee the last time these teams met here. Eight to seven in overtime. It looked like it was gonna be a comeback win for the ages for Milwaukee, but the Ambush tied it up late in regulation, won in overtime on a goal by Felipe. St. Louis at eight and 10, they are three and six on the road. Still in the playoff race, but it's getting down to the wire for them. They're coming off a 7-4 loss to the Ontario Fury in St. Louis on Friday night. Meanwhile, the Wave at 11-4. Huge overtime victory in Kansas City this past Friday night. 7-6, Chad Vandegrift, the hero on that one. Two teams really need this one for the playoff push. Once again, a lot of playoff implications in this match. Credit to St. Louis for still being in the conversation this late in the season. The Wave coming off what I feel like is their best total complete game performance of the year against KC to win an overtime with that Chad Vandergriff lefty. As you alerted to earlier, uh, St. Louis without that psychological hurdle of never beating the Wave at home. So, you know, they won't have that to contend with. Expect a tough, hard fought Eastern Conference match tonight. Ambush, uh, however, is missing one of their key players from last time. That's Milwaukee native Tony Walls. Tony is now off with the Pittsburgh Riverhounds of the USL. So that's a tough guy to replace, certainly at this time of the season. But speaking of replacing, Milwaukee finding Joey Capinos, bringing him in last week. Huge overtime win against the Florida Tropics here. Huge overtime win in Kansas City the other night. I mean, you talk about a veteran who has stepped in and performed phenomenally. Joey Capinos has been the man. Yeah, he played great. And you know, every goalie that stepped in for the Wave this season has had their great moments. And Capinos is now the third keeper to step in this season. And he was absolutely excellent against the Kansas City Comets last, last game. Very accurate with his hands, very calm and composed in the back with his feet, and uh, definitely an asset to this team this late in the season. So Capinos, once again, will get the call today with Rafa Diaz still trying to recover from injury. But uh, Coach Giuliano Oliviero, certainly with good depth in the goalkeepers. Coach Oliviero now up to 101 career victories after the one in KC the other night. And he'll tell you right now, nothing would be bigger than 102 if he can get it today. So we'll come back with more here from Milwaukee. It's the Wave against the Ambush. This is Wave Soccer and MASL TV. From the UW. Just about ready to go here from Panther Arena in Milwaukee. Welcome back to today's broadcast as the Milwaukee Wave, led by that man right there, captain lead scorer Ian Bennett, will take on the St. Louis Ambush. So he said, game four of the five game season series, Wave taking the first two in St. Louis earlier this year. Wave actually opened up the season with a 7-2 win in St. Louis and then followed that up a couple weeks later with a 6-1 conquest of the Ambush. But the last time the teams came here, it was the Ambush winning 8-7 in overtime on a golden goal by Felipe. About uh, four minutes into the OT. And so we welcome you, one and all, wherever you may be watching today's game, whether it be in the city of Milwaukee, state of Wisconsin, down in St. Louis, or the state of Missouri, or maybe even across the river in Illinois, in the United States of America, the North American continent, the planet Earth, which includes the self-proclaimed best basketball player on the planet, Joel Embiid. We welcome him if he's <laughs> watching today, although uh, his recent trip to Milwaukee, probably not one he's gonna remember all that much. and. Anywhere in the solar system, including the International Space Station, Tenzin, it should be a good one today. Yeah, I've been looking forward to this one all week. The Eastern Conference is heating up. The MASL is heating up. Some great matches from around the league. And this one should be no different, as St. Louis has beaten the wave on this turf before. So i um, excited for this game here. Ambush come in at 8 and 10. They are currently 7th in the East Division, six and a half games behind division leading Florida, which is 15 and two, but four games back of fourth place Baltimore, which would be the fourth and final playoff spot in the Eastern Conference. 
Top four teams in each conference qualify for the Ron Newman Cup playoffs. Wave at 11 and four, five and three on the home turf, six and one on the road. Ambusher three and six on the road, five and four at home. And Milwaukee third in the East, three games in back of Florida, one game behind Utica for the second spot. Utica hosting the Rochester Lancers today who almost pulled off the miracle of the MASL season last night which would have been if had they been able to somehow come back and defeat Baltimore, but the Blast winning at 6-5 in overtime last night in Rochester. Lancers will be in Utica today. That game kicking off about the same time as we are here. And then uh, a little bit later on today, Dallas will be hosting San Diego. The Sockers will be the Waves' next opponent in San Diego this upcoming Saturday. Leap day from Pachenga Arena. You can bet it will be rocking out there. Kansas City also hosting Ontario in another big game. Comets now on life support for their playoff possibilities at 8-8 eight and eight after their gut-wrenching tough loss to the Wave the other night. 7-6 in overtime down in Independence. And hosting the Red Hots, Ontario Fury, the King, Frank Tayu, who the Wave will see a week from today out in California. He's been heating it up, Tenzin, and the Fury look like they might be starting to roll. Here we go from Milwaukee. St. Louis goes right to left as we look at the action in the white uniforms. Wave coming out with the IMAX tandem up front along with midfielder Chino. Defenders Chad Vandegrift and Guillermo Vega, who has it right now, and the goalkeeper Joey Capinos. Vega gets cut off on the far side. JT Thomas has it for... The ambush, Thomas, their leading scorer, 19 goals, 9 assists for 28 points. The native from Doncaster, England, and Missouri State University. He and Daduka are the two big guys up front, Tenzin. And so we'll keep an eye on those matchups. Defenders are going to have their hands full. Trying yep. to work those guys up front. Absolutely. Two guys that you can see learning the game slowly and slowly, every game getting a little bit better. Daduka, in particular, a rising star in this league. Uh, player to watch tonight for sure. Let's see if the Wave can channel their first quarter from the against Kansas City What I thought was their best performance of the year to start off a game So very important to start off well here and the good teams can put away teams early So let's let's see if that's uh, that's gonna be something to watch for here Paulo Nascimento is the goalkeeper for st. Louis Here's Anthony Grant coming forward shot save Capinos and Joey comes up with a good save the first time he's been challenged today so Capinos making his third start and appearance for the Wave since they picked him up after the latest injury to Rafa Diaz. And he has been nothing short of sensational for Milwaukee in helping the Wave to these two consecutive overtime victories. There's the man from Ludlow, Massachusetts and the University of Southern New Hampshire, Joey Capinos. The team very happy with Joey Capinos in goal at the moment. Talked to some of the guys and they talk of his calming presence, not just in goal, but just as a person. Calm individual, puts them at ease. And as a defender, love having keepers that are very calm and poised in the back. That translates to calm and poised defenders. So uh, great addition for sure. You saw Paulo Nascimento making a nice stop on a pretty good turning shot from Andre Hain. Here's LSO coming in, trying to play it square across for Stuart Grable. Grable will reload, but now Stefan San Louis coming on. Could be a two on one for the ambush. San Louis off the end board and danger averted for Milwaukee. LSO back the other way. He's two on three with Ian Bennett. Luan still coming forward, but the ambush get back defensively. Good decision from Luan right there. I like the angle of approach that Huffman took on St. Louis there. Just making him second guess that initial pass across. Max Ferdinand tried to find Drew Wiedebach in the slot going across. Max reloads. Drew in the middle. He tried to redirect but couldn't get it on goal, and now the foul gonna be called on Wiedebach, the Mequon native, Homestead High, and like Tenzin Rampa, a proud graduate of the University of Wisconsin, Milwaukee. That's Souza with it, back for Nascimento, Paulo Nascimento, who has started every game in the Nets for the ambush so far this year, eight and eight with a 6.41 goals against average, a 6.77 save percentage. And he 
anchored St. Louis in their big win here. Remember, when the Ambush defeated the Wave here 8 7 in overtime on January 12th, that broke a 26 game losing streak for St. Louis against Milwaukee. First time the Ambush had ever defeated Milwaukee since the franchise was revived prior to the 2013 14 season. So, as you said, Tenzin, the Ambush got a big psychological hurdle out of the way. Now, can they try to follow that up with a victory here today? Absolutely, and you can just you just have to build from that if you are St. Louis. There isn't that allure to the wave that there might have been in the past because you've beat them at home before. But now, hey, teams are a little bit sharper. Teams are a little bit better now, and with the loss of Tony Wall, it doesn't make things any easier. But you got to pretty much play a perfect game if you're St. Louis to come in today and win this one. This wave looking very sharp. That was Jonathan Tansos, number 75, former longtime member of the Wave, who was traded to St. Louis midway through the season, just before the ambush rolled in to get the victory here on January 12th. Santos was a key part of that. Again, St. Louis in the white uniforms going right to left as we look at the action here. JT Thomas with it will play it back out. And now Felipe, who was the overtime hero last time these teams played. Thomas with a shot and a goal! As he cracked it inside near post, Capino's got a piece of it but could not hold it out. JT Thomas, number 20 on the season, and St. Louis grabs a 1-0 lead. And that was pretty much a textbook, old-school indoor goal right there. Right, initial pass into Daduko, did well to get it down on his first touch, and then that third man run shooting across there. Good finish from JT Thomas. Daduka Carvalho with the assist, time of the goal at 4.41. As JT Thomas, the third year forward out of Missouri State, gets his 20th of the year. He has gradually picked up the production during his career. Yeah, the key for me on that last goal was Daduka's first touch. Anytime you get a target that can stop the ball on the sole of his foot in control on your first touch, just makes everything else easier. The run to them gets easier. The third man runs are timed a little bit better. So everything from the first touch there. Ninth assist of the year for Carvalho to go along with 18 goals for 27 points. And JT Thomas now, 20 goals, nine assists for 29 to top the beat. Ian Bennett is <laughs> surrounded in the corner by the entire ambush team and a foul eventually called. I'm not sure Ian was gonna get out of there alive with everybody surrounding him there. All right, virtual corner kick restart as Max is on the ball. Ian coming off a hat trick against the Kansas City Comets this past Friday. Seems like Ian has had a career average of a hat trick per game against the Comets. He scored his share against the ambush as well. Circles in front of Max and now too much time. No, in fact, instead a delay game warning against the ambush. Yeah, Max pretty ha pretty much has his cadence on these free, free kicks down pretty well. That looked like a warning from the get. Rich Grady, Kyle Trimble, two veteran officials calling the game here today. So St. Louis with the early lead. In it comes, Vega fires a shot, the goal! Guillerme with a CNI ball that got through. We're tied at one. The weight of the pass from Max right there, so important, allowing Vega the time to pick his corner and side foot it. Check it out one more time on the Wisconsin Vision instant replay. Max will get the assistant on the restock goal as you see it one more time. There's a good angle there to see how that ball stuck through. Well placed by Vega. And the 34-year-old Brazilian now in his fifth season with the Wave. Picks up another goal, his fourth of the year. Also has four assists for eight points. And Max Ferdinand with the assist. Max among the league leaders in that category gets number 21. And just like that, Stefan San Luis, his last name spelled just like the team he plays for. And he goes right down the lane to put St. Louis back up again. Just yeah, Stefan right there just making an early decision to turn to his favorite foot around his left shoulder on his right foot and just bulldoze his way through contact right there. Went right through Chad and really no other help behind him. 
Yeah, Stewie did come over to support. Kind of went over the ball there a little bit. Well, good. It. Stefan San Luis with a big goal there just 12 seconds after the wave had tied it up. Now, who knows? We could be really headed for a shootout here today. Yeah. Into the middle. Redirection by Barrio just off the mark. Now, rebound follow just off. Rebound follow Wiedemach above the frame. Danny Barrio digs it out. Barrio, the rookie out of Waukesha, who played his college ball at Florida Southern. Getting a chance early. Now Souza breaks up that pass from Huffman. Sending it to Koyakov, who's going to run to the right side. Trying to blow by Vega. Koyakov plays it high off the glass. Ball pops into the middle, and Capinos covers it up. Stefan San Luis, by the way, got his third goal of the season at 528 to put the ambush on top. Ambush pressing high. If the wave can breathe this front three, they should have a numbers up situation the other way. Chino. Here we lays are. it to the middle, two against the keeper, three against the keeper, Max lays it off! Save. And the save made! Are you kidding me, Nascimento? Wave did everything they had to do to break the pressure right there. Can't ask for more than a 3v0. Just a great save from Nascimento right there. Well, I got a feeling he thought it was going to go to Ian, and he read the play right. And he can't blame Max. That's the guy who has uh, been doing the business for him all these years. I'm not sure I ever see a, saw a keeper stop a 3 on 0. Yeah, I mean, just, I think he just took a right guess there. So it's still 2-1. to one. Vega trying to go long for Bramley. Couldn't get it through. Now Thomas back the other way for St. Louis. Lays it off to the right for Will Namase. Couldn't make the connection. Good turn there by Bradley for the wave. Up in the near wing, Izak. Izak. Shot is blocked, deflected over the glass. It'll be a kick in for Milwaukee. But we will take our time out as we look one more time at that sensational kick save by Paolo Nascimento. We'll come back with more. This is Wave Soccer and MASL TV. She always said, food is love. So when she moved in with us, a new kitchen became part of our financial plan. There was a dream. I want to make the most of every meal we have together. At Northwestern Mutual, our version of financial planning helps you live your dreams today. Find a Northwestern Mutual advisor at nm.com. Vision. See more life. Wave to play it in. 7.23 left to go. First period. St. Louis leading 2 to 1. And that man right there stopping a 3 versus himself with no defenders just moments ago. LSO with it for Milwaukee. They move it left to right as we look at the action here. Both teams in attack mode to start this game for sure. Now Max Ferdinand working against Pepe Junkura. Back he'll leave. LSO will send it off the inboard. Santos there to sweep it away. Yeah, St. Louis opting to play an in-your-face high style defense right now. It's going to be interesting to see if the Wave can beat that front initial line and create numbers up situations similar to what we just had. 
Max will look for LSO. Just a bit behind him. And LSO getting called for the foul as uh, looked like he pushed down Junkera there. Got to get on. First personal against Luan Salas Oliveira. Again, in the MASL, you get three personals in each half on your fourth. Your team then would be penalized two minutes. Yeah, last time we played the ambush, they were definitely laying back more defensively, packing it in, and made it very difficult. They jumped out to a 6-1 lead. But then Milwaukee rallied for six consecutive goals, most of those with the sixth attacker, to eventually go up 7-6 with a couple minutes to go. But the ambush then got the tying goal, 19 seconds to tie it up, and then won it in overtime. Yeah, I, I agree, Tom. You know, just based on body language, guys look like they're playing with a little bit more belief for, on the ambush here, which, which is good to see. Well, Coach Everton Mabrera, again, former Wave star, played with Milwaukee for six seasons. Done a masterful job coaching and developing this team. When he took over three years ago, they were coming off a 1-19 season. But then 3-19, and 10-14, and 14, and now 8-10 this year. And uh, to say the least, they've been much more competitive and entertaining than they were when Everton first inherited this team. Good ownership, good management down in St. Louis, good fan support. Organization that uh, certainly is befitting of a, of a good team. And even if they don't make the playoffs this year, again, another competitive team just like last year. And uh, some great uh, some great moments for this ambush team as well this year. Way of really spreading the field here. Chino. Will chip one in. Huffman heads it across, coming in with a shot, just missing Isaac. Oh, great combination there. That would have been a sensational goal. Wave without Marcio Liete again today. Marcio still out with that uh, leg injury that kept him out of Friday's game in KC. As Isaac tries to get there before Souza pokes it away. Isaac comes back to get it. Ian Bennett with it now. Ian hemmed in along the board, battling with Koyakov, and the foul going to be called on Vadim Koyakov. Good battle there from Ian. Good battle there from Isaac as well. Isaac is a player for me. He does a lot of intangibles that sometimes don't go noticed. He's that guy that gets that extra touch to keep a play alive. So, so important that he's that he was a part of that play there to wave, keep the ball. High engine for the 22-year-old Absolutely, Mexican, Isaac Pereira. Huffman, he'll launch one. Save made by Nascimento. Oh, Derek with a good strike there from distance. And Paolo Nascimento, the 34-year-old native of Natal, Brazil, coming up with a big save. That was return postage territory right there, and great save by Nascimento. All right, Max ready to trigger from the corner. In it comes, LSO fires a shot tight angle. Blocked out of there, but Max will reload. Thomas and San Louis with the goals for the ambush. Vega for Milwaukee. LSO drives it in. Knocked down the middle. Max trying to redirect. And uh, foul going to be called now on the ambush in St. Louis. Can't believe it. I think it's going to be Koyoko. Picks up his second personal. You can see he's a bit disbelieving there. Yeah, he looks like he's claiming he got the ball, but he came in two-footed up. Let's see the replay. Well, he did the scissors action, although he didn't catch LSO's leg there. Looked like Luan may have actually kicked into him, but you know, those are scary moments. Any single time you come in two-footed like that, looks like they did a good thing is okay. Absolutely, there's Luan Salas Oliveira. LSO having another fine season for the Milwaukee Wave. He and Ian Bennett, the two top power play goal scorers in this league. Across it comes, Bradley fires a shot, blocked by Santos. Uh, we've seen Jonathan Santos block shots for many a year, and he comes up with another one there. Now LSO up front, 
up high. Rills one into the gut of, is that the Duca? I think he's feeling that one. Yeah, still trying to defend to his credit, but that one caught him in a bad spot. And it had some pace to it. Check it out one more time. And still on his feet, trying to keep good defensive shape. Boy, you got to give wow. him credit for that, for sure. Well, we don't really don't have to describe the uh, type of pain Paducah uh, suffering there. Any of you uh, male athletic participants who have uh, suffered that stunning blow before can certainly relate. So Daduka coming off, shaking up, but hopefully going to be okay. JT Thomas comes back out there for him. All right, free kick coming. 314 left to go first period. Wave still friendly two to one. Bradley to Vega, now to LSL. He'll roll one in, save read, Max follow, save made, Nascimento. Max trying to lift it up over the keeper, almost was able to do it. San Luis comes away with it, and he'll take a foul on Max for the hip check. And San Luis early in this game, Tenzin, is becoming a significant factor. Three, now take two. away, 3-2 in the zone, Vega lays it off far side. Uh, yeah. Ian trying to reload off the end board. Couldn't convert. Yeah, just a little bit too far in front of Ian there to step into his money right foot. Both teams getting plenty of opportunities here in the first period. Chino, who had the game-winning goal here a week ago against Florida, and over time over to Vega. Tried to play in the middle for Andre Hain, couldn't get there. And now the ambush will come away with it. Good shape that time from Yang and Andre to make hey, to just quell the uh, counterattack there. Axel Duarte with it for the ambush. Has only played six games this year. Hasn't shown up on the scoring line yet. Now Lucas Almeida. Chino will keep the pressure going on Nascimento. Deft little chip over the top. They've got two on one in the zone. Anthony Grant flicks it across. And a nice job there by Capinos. Who flips it out to start the fast break? Here comes Isaac down the left wing. Three on four. And didn't get much on that one as it fielded easily by Nascimento. And that's something that Capinos was doing all game against the KC Comets was his distribution with his hands starting the attack. So, you no, know, just something to his arsenal. Very good. Doesn't have a big arm back there, but a very accurate one. Santos now will... Play it back for Otomia Souza. Souza made his league debut against the Wave here back in that game January 12th. And actually scored a goal in that one, if I recall. But he's uh, he's been a good addition to the St. Louis squad here in the second half of the season. That's Will Namasi right there. Namasi, a Paris, France native, played his college soccer at Central Methodist down in Missouri. You know, we had a Got a up close uh, personal look at Namasi on pregame, Tenzin. He is a very well built young yes, man. Yes, he is. Very much like our Ali Berry. Yeah. Talk about a big guy, 6'1, 6'2, and he's, he's got some pretty solid build to him. Gino, nice job there to play it across. Stuart Grable. Stuart, the veteran out of Nina, Wisconsin, and UWGB, now in his fifth season with the Wave. 15 seconds to go in the period. Fans trying to inspire the wave here down the stretch. Max out high. Trying to play one across, broken up. Souza with it. Good immediate wave. pressure that time from Danny Murillo. And the shot by Witte back in the buzzer is stopped by Nascimento. That will do it for the first period. Well, exciting first period, end to end action here in Milwaukee. And as we go to the break, it's St. Louis 2, Milwaukee 1. This is Wave Soccer and MASL TV.
one way to explore the world. My way is to push myself and never take the easy road. I prefer a road that winds through forests and goes up mountains because I've always been an adventurer at heart. That's why I can't wait to be a scout. Because scouting will guide me to great things. It won't just teach me to navigate the woods with confidence, but it'll give me the confidence to navigate the world. I'll enter the scouts as the best version of myself today and will grow into the best version of myself for my future. Scouting will show me how to use bravery, trustworthiness, loyalty, and kindness to become a person I'm proud to be. Because there's no one way to explore the world, and my way is in the scouts. So, so scout, scout me, me in. in. vision of creating a sports medicine program from the grassroots level, from peewees to the pros. At Midwest Orthopedic Specialty Hospital, we are taking care of athletes and getting them back on the field. Over 80% of the patients that come to see us for sports-related injuries do not need surgery. That really surprises people. We can relate to our patients because many of us have been there. Athletes like to say they give 110%. Well, guess what? So do we. We are Dental Associates, a passionate team dedicated to providing care for your entire family. From a simple cleaning to braces, Invisalign, wisdom teeth removal, dentures, and dental implants, we conveniently do it all. Best of all, we're a family-owned business headquartered in Milwaukee. Our team members are Wisconsin families like yours with the mission to improve lives beyond dentistry. Contact us today to schedule your next appointment. Some of my best memories growing up were cooking with mom. She always said, food is love. So when she moved in with us, a new kitchen became part of our financial plan. There was a dream. I want to make the most of every meal we have together. At Northwestern Mutual, our version of financial planning helps you live your dreams today. Find a Northwestern Mutual advisor at nm.com. Second quarter underway. Wave kicks off. They go right to left in the black uniforms as we look at the action. Ambush on top, two to one. Here's Chad Vandegrift, the hero from Friday night with his overtime game winner. Chad slides the pass over to Max Ferdinand. Now back to Chad. And Chad with a sensational finish from the middle of the box to win that thing 215 into overtime Friday night in KC. Duduka trying to control as Ian Bennett took a poke at it. LSO will reload back for Vega as he circles against Carvalho. Updated scores from across the league in Utica. The Utica FC team with a 2-1 lead over Rochester. Utica, of course, going in heavily favored in that one. Lancers losing in overtime at home last night to Baltimore. Still looking for their first win of the year. Max. Top of the area, fires a shot, the goal! Oh, Max with a beautiful move there! And we're back even at two apiece. You know, one thing that I learned quickly when Max Ferdinand joined the wave as a player having to defend him is just his ability to hesitate and hesitate and hesitate. Almost patient to a fault, that time not so. Great finish after two, maybe three hesitations to get defenders on the ground. Puts it nicely in the far corner. Well done, Max. And it'll be the other part of the IMAX tandem, Ian Bennett, who picks up the assist. Max doing most of the work there. But Ian found a way to get it to him, and that certainly paid dividends for the way. Max with his 13th goal of the year now has 13 goals, 21 assists, including an assist on the Waves' earlier goal by Guillermo Vega. 
And Ian Bennett now with five assists on the year. He tops the wave with 36 points. 31 of those coming into the nets. Thomas drives one in. Capino's right there to get it. Joey plays it out to Pereira at midfield. He's dumped by Almeida. Foul is called. So Ian Bennett with 36 points. Max with 33. They're hanging in the MESL scoring race. But the King out in Ontario has started to take over, Tenzin. I believe it's 53 for Frank Teo. Yeah, you know, and all prolific goal scorers, I think if you ask Ian and if you ask Max, though, you know, the ultimate prize is, you know, playing on a championship team and getting a ring. So, you know, that's something that has, uh, you know, that the guys have focused on in the past, but now it's, it's all team now. It's all team. Frank Teo has come close. Been to the finals a couple of times. Thwarted when he played for Sonora, thwarted by the Baltimore Blast. Actually, three times he was with Monterey last year and denied by the Milwaukee Wave as San Luis got called for the foul. Check it out one more time. Stefan can play with a bit of an edge at times. We've seen that. I mean, boy, he wiped out Mario Alvarez last time they played. Great save there! Oh, and the rebound follow. Andre couldn't get much on it. Nascimento ever get back for a cover. Nascimento is coming up big so far here for St. Louis today. Now take away Milwaukee. Hain back in the middle, LSO. LSO. Still trying to get top of the area, poked away. And the ambush coming back. Great job there by Luan to get it. 4-3 in the zone. Andre couldn't get the shot. Follow. Just save wide. And a man down for the ambush. Andre now down for Milwaukee. As uh, Felipe had also gone down for St. Louis. Let's take a look one more time. Here's Andre getting ready to turn the shoot. Oh, and mm. on the follow through, ended up banging legs with Felipe, and they both got hurt. You see Andre grimacing as he comes off the side. Yeah, if you're going to go in there, Felipe, and poke that ball away, be ready for, you know, an, a, a trailing foot there. Both guys okay. That's good. Now, Andre just got back in the lineup a couple of weeks ago, and uh, his impact has been immediate for Milwaukee. And we got a foul coming up here against the Wave. But very impressed with Andre. You know, basically first half of the season, he was out due to the... Uh, administrative issues with immigration trying to get eligible again and uh, but he stepped right in the lineup Tenzin like he had been playing since day one absolutely and you know he's been training with the guys right but you know game fitness is totally different than training fitness but one thing that we say with the Milwaukee Wave and we've said it you know since I've been on the team is your trainings have to be harder than the game so that's probably helped him Pinos with it. Joey works his way up to the line. Now finds Alex Bradley. Working it back. Hasn't been uh, an extended possession game on either side here so far. Both teams have been in attack mode since the start of this one. Danny Murillo midfield. Danny getting another opportunity to play today. He's got a goal so far this year. And he's been another solid first year addition to the wave now Bradley in the corner tried to lay it back for Isaac but ambush commits a foul not a good foul there after Bradley had already given up the ball and yeah yeah and if you're the ambush right now with this extended possession from the wave you got to play them honest you got to follow runners and you can't cheat can't slack on defense or you know as you know the wave very good in numbers up situations Vega will fire one in that deflects off target. Matthew Yang back for Murillo, the two Metro Milwaukee natives. Matty Yang from Milwaukee, Danny Murillo from Waukesha. 
Now Maria with it. Danny, not the biggest guy, but uh, very slick ball handler. And uh, we've seen before just tremendous soccer ability. Ball going to be called there. And at times when Coach Olivier always put the young guys into the lineup, they have usually been uh, pretty productive for Milwaukee so far this year. Yeah, definitely bringing the energy, right? For sure. You know, guys like Danny Murillo, um, Wiedebach, I mean, Mario Albert, every guy that's stepped in has contributed this season. It's been good to see. San Luis tries to get it back out high and uh, got a foul on <clears throat> the ambush. Koyakov is going to pick up his third of this. And Pepe and San Luis now getting into it with Vega. And we'll see as the officials sort it out. But you can tell emotions running high here. I'm not sure either of those guys, Vega or San Luis, are your, are your best diplomats uh, to be engaged in discussion. Yeah, you know, you want to be fiery, right? Absolutely. That was a foul. You've won the foul. You know, hey, you're the championship team. We carry on. As you see the look of disbelief in Koyakov, and I gotta agree, but he probably did uh, get uh, a bit unlucky on that call. That's his third personal foul, so he's gotta be careful now, one more, and uh, that would be a blue card. Nice little touch there, Andre Hain to Vega. He'll back it back up. Well, there's no question, Ted, that this, this one's got some playoff intensity to it. Maybe a little more wide open than you might see in a playoff game but as far yeah. as the intensity goes there's no doubt and you know what some of these guys know each other you know and there might be a little bit of bad blood there too that's a sense I'm getting you know not necessarily best friends out there <laughs> two teams in you know different different positions I believe a, a couple of these guys may have actually uh, briefly been at uh, Matt Schmidt's wedding last night our old buddy Matt Schmidt tying the knot so congrats to Matty congrats so, Matt Schmidt so they they were friendly at that point but uh, <laughs> <laughs> it didn't last very long. Not when they showed up here today, that's for sure. Chino starts the run up field. Passes behind. Somehow Ian sports out. But CDG able to get there and play it back. And another foul against the ambush. Ambush really racking up the team fouls here in the first half. But again, it's only individual fouls that apply as, as far as... Uh, potential penalties are concerned. Yeah, Wave have just been a little bit quicker to the front foot, and that's resulting in some late tackles from the St. Louis ambush, so. Chino triple teamed along the board and rolls it weakly to Nascimento. Firing long, looking for Duarte, trying to get behind the defense. Chad Bandegriff and Ian Bennett track him down. Now Capinos will step out to Try and play it. It comes to Thomas. Oh, worked it across Almeida wide open, but he had to reload on the play. Well done by Max to actually step forward on Almeida there and not drop back along the shot. Ambush reload. Here's Daduka turning, shooting, just missing near post. Here comes Ian running out of there with LSO. Max trailing. It's a three on three. Ian fires it in. And Nascimento. Able to make the save, did not spill the rebound far enough for another chance. Thomas looking at midfield. Huffman steps up to play it. Now Great Max. Read. Cycle it back out. Stuart Grable has it. You know, part of being a good defender is anticipating that penetration pass, and Huffman's done a good job so far, especially on Daduka. He's played him honest, played him physical. Ian will play it back out for Stuart Grable. So the Wave heading to the West Coast, sunny California next weekend to take on San Diego Saturday night. That's leap night, February 29th at the Pachinga Arena in San Diego. Nine o'clock Central Time kickoff there. Seven o'clock if you happen to be going out to San Diego to see the game. There's Ball called on Drew Wiedemann. That's his second now quickly. St. Louis starts it back as Grant will play to San Luis. And then Milwaukee having a head north to Ontario following the game in San Diego. Not that far north, but they'll be taking on the Fury, which will be another tough contest. And that's 5 o'clock Central Time, 3 o'clock 
if you happen to be out in Ontario at the Toyota Arena. To say the least, tens, and that is going to be a very challenging road trip. So crucial that the Wave take care of business here today. LSO trying to get forward, broken up now. Wiedemach able to win it from Grant, plays it far side. Isaac with a shot, save, rebound, Wiedemach. No, Isaac Pereira trying to come into the shot. Top of the area, Andre Hayes! <laughs> The big guy finishes it off. Ball was hopping up and down in the mixer. And I think Pereira might get an assist. We'll have to double check. Boy, what a finish by Andre, though. Check it out one more time. You see, I ease mean, I come in. Well, these, these are incredibly high stress moments for defenders. You got to lay your body out on the line and drop. I'm not surprised Andre finishes there. He's remarkably, remarkably good out of the air, almost almost like a beat soccer player. You know, you've seen his bicycle kicks, you've seen his side scissor kicks right there, volleying it on the first touch, full volley on the second touch. Great finish. So we will take a break. Big goal by Andre Hain in the wave. Milwaukee three, St. Louis two. This is Wave Soccer and MASL TV. We had a vision of creating a sports medicine program from the grassroots level, from peewees to the pros. At Midwest Orthopedic Specialty Hospital, we are taking care of athletes and getting them back on the field. Over 80% of the patients that come to see us for sports-related injuries do not need surgery. That really surprises people. We can relate to our patients because many of us have been there. Athletes like to say they give 110%. Well, guess what? So do we. We are Dental Associates, a passionate team dedicated to providing care for your entire family. From a simple cleaning to braces, Invisalign, wisdom teeth removal, dentures, and dental implants, we conveniently do it all. Best of all, we're a family-owned business headquartered in Milwaukee. Our team members are Wisconsin families like yours with the mission to improve lives beyond dentistry. Contact us today to schedule your next appointment. Well, it was three to two when we went to break. It's now two to two as uh, public address announcer Van McNeil was trying to explain to the fans a foul before the sequence that led to the goal, I guess, Tenzin. I, think I thought they said it was on Bradley. And here comes Anthony Grant the other way. Shot and a goal, and the ambush take the lead. What a turn of events here in Milwaukee. Yep, and if you're watching from home, that is indoor soccer right there, right? What you thought was a goal quickly turns the other way into a finish the other way. So here we go, 3-2, ambush. 8.41 the time of the goal, technically 10 seconds after the other one was denied. Nice strike there by Anthony Grant. Grant, who had a couple of big years in Kansas City last year, playing with uh, the uh, Comets. 17 goals, five assists in 21 games the previous year. 17 goals, four assists in 14 games. He gets his fourth of the year. No assists as of yet. Well, an amazing turn of events against the Milwaukee Wave. We'll see if they come back with it. I, I would still like to see some kind of replay on the previous goal sequence. Yeah, you it, know what I think they called was a foul off the ball. 
I, I'm not sure if there was a handball, but it looked like there was some bodying going on inside the box. Well, uh, the ambush did immediately protest after it happened. I, but, you know, if it's not a handball, I'd, that's very surprising right. to see that yeah. overturn yeah. for sure. Okay, Wave trailing by a goal again right after they had initially thought they had their first lead of the day. Isaac trying to dig it out, foul called, and once again, you can tell tensions are running high here between these teams. Yeah, and you get the feeling that Wave has got to get back to their game, be a little bit more resilient, not get into the chippy, chippy nature that the St. Louis ambush wants to play. Five and a half to go here in the first half. All right, Let's see if we can pick it up here in our uh, PIP picture in a picture. Maybe it was a handball on Wiedebach. Can't see much from there. Boy, it certainly wasn't Alex Bradley involved in that. I thought that's that was who they said. Ball called in the ambush. Boy, St. Louis, they have to be approaching a season high in the league for first half fouls today. So that was number three. They've got two guys carrying three fouls now. And uh, they're going to have to be careful here the last five minutes. Normally, you, somebody's got three fouls, you pull them off the field, but when it gets late in the half, you don't want to give up that uh, potential penalty for four fouls. See if the Wave can take advantage. Capinos in for Andre Hain. Well, even though it didn't count as a goal, that was a great finish by Andre for yep. sure. Well done to keep it in there by Yang. And I think they're going to get Max for a handball, maybe? No, Rich Grady says uh, foul off the ball. Andre was trying for a quick restart, but San Luis wouldn't let him do it. Smart move there. So, Max will restart it from the line. Looking back door, oh, shot a goal! Wiedemach! Just an excellent no-look entry pass right there. Wiedemach knew where that ball was going the whole way. It's all about making contact and keeping it on frame at that point. Trademark split pass from Max on the restart right there. Hips facing east-west. Right, playing that ball north-south. Well done. Boy, restart goal of the year for Milwaukee. Drew Wiedebach, number six. Check it out one more time. That's big-time conversion there. Don't look now, but Drew Wiedebach's got six goals this season for Milwaukee. And he's taking his chances for sure. Just... <laughs> and I would say the former teammate of our... Producer director Ian Thompson got to be in line for uh, uh, rising player of the year for the Milwaukee Wave, perhaps. Max with another assist, second helper of the day. He's got a goal and two assists, 22 assists on the year now. So back to even at three apiece. Wave has yet to lead in this contest. Thought we had the lead there momentarily, but but they have still yet to take an official lead in today's game. St. Louis has had an answer every time. The Wave has scored. Now at midfield, Chino has it. Chino trying to lay it off. Oh, it's a nice for ball Vega. from Chino. Just a little bit ahead of him. Bradley gets it. Alex gonna take a crack and fires high. Bennett on the rebound, but he couldn't control as Daduka comes away. Daduka rumbling into the zone. He's actually got a little better speed than you'd think, but Milwaukee able to break it up. End to end action here in the first half today, fans. Chino with a charging defender coming at him that time. And that one will be poked up into the stands. 
Just over three minutes left to go in the first half. Tied at three. Don't forget, Wade will be right back here on the black turf of Panther Arena March 7th and 8th for a back-to-back -back two game set against the Orlando Seawolves. Saturday the 7th as Huffman rips a shot wide rebound. The flex out toward midfield. That'll be a 6-0-7 game on March 7th as Grant got around Capinos. Shot then a goal. Well, it was do or die for Joey. Came charging out and Anthony Grant with his second consecutive goal for the ambush. And again, St. Louis regains the lead 4-3. Yeah, it just looked like we lost our shape there a little bit. Guy with his, yeah, coming right down Route 1. You see, Chino had to try to jump over Capinos, who was charging out. I, I don't know if he would have got there anyway, but that certainly did not make things any easier. Good finish by Grant. He told you this guy can score some goals. And unlucky for... St. Louis, this is only the sixth game he's played this year. Otherwise, he could have really been an impact player. De a timely arrival with Tony Walls defecting from the team, that's for sure. Absolutely, and he's a guy that, you know, he's, he's a guy that just reminds me of KC Comets. Very good in the transition attack, quick. Taking his chances right now. That's Jonathan Pachar, number 23, who Eventually was able to control it for St. Louis. Yeah, Grant, he, he was definitely a challenge to deal with with the Comets, and uh, shouldn't be any surprise to the boys out here today, that's for sure. St. Louis battling with Max and Wiedebach. And Max takes care of St. Louis. Puts him down as Capinos picks it up. Capinos getting pressure, had to unload quickly. Matty Yang has it, will back it up for the keeper. Launching long. Bradley getting held up, foul is called. Alex looking for the quick restart. And they say play on, oh, LSO trying to slip it through for Ian Bennett, couldn't quite do it. Bradley with a follow, that one deflected. Out of play in a corner coming. Don't look away for more than a few seconds, fans opportunities on each end I would say uh, basically every 15 seconds here and here we go almost a mirror image of Vega's first goal Let's see if st. Louis has learned to play a little bit higher right here but so far it looks like that shot is on Ian maybe with the dummy Max oh, drives it across he gets knocked out he gets it back Vega now will send it back into Max Launches a shot that's blocked. Bradley has it. Alex going to tee one up. Shot is blocked. And it'll bounce into the official box over there. Just over a minute to play first half. This game has had a little bit of everything so far. Max got up muscled that time. Good step up by Ian to win it back. Ian with a hat-trick the other night in KC. He's still looking for his first goal here today, although he did have an assist on Ferdinand's goal earlier. LSO will work it across. Vega now to Chad Vandegrift. Ferdinand plays it back. Final 30 seconds of the first half. Trying to probe for holes right now in the defense. LSO looking for that forward pass. Very compact from St. Louis right now. Now to CBG. Chad working against San Luis. Chad began his MSL career with the ambush. Actually going back to the MISL days. He played three years in St. Louis before coming to Milwaukee. This now was fourth season. Long Chip Capino set the buzzer off the mark. And so as we go to the locker room at halftime, it's the St. Louis ambush leading the way four to three. Wave it tied it up on that goal by Drew Wiedebach. But Anthony Grant with his second of the contests. 
a little bit later, giving St. Louis the lead at halftime. And stay with us here. We're going to go down the field and pick up the interview between Van McNeil and Wave head coach Giuliano Oliviero. Be interested to hear what the coach's perspective is. And let's send it down right now to Van McNeil. Time for our Midwest Orthopedic Specialty Hospital Coach's Corner, checking in with head coach Giuliano Oliviero. First half action, I'm sure not where we want to be right now, down a goal. Yeah, a little bit frustrated. You see it in the guys' faces. Um, you know, uh, every time uh, we got a goal and we got ourselves back to even ground, uh, they took the lead. Um, a little bit of controversy on Andre Haynes' goal, and we didn't react well to it, but... Uh, you know, we got 30 minutes to get this right. What has changed about this St. Louis ambush team? They've brought it this year. You know what? The, uh, our guys know it. They come into this building. Uh, they're playing the champions. We're going to get their best game, and and uh, we got to be ready for it. And they know us really well. And and uh, I, I think if uh, we're, we're a little more focused in the second half, we'll be fine. All right, thanks, Coach. Head Coach Giuliano Oliviero. He's going to head back to the locker room, talk to the guys, get them amped up. We need you amped up in here, Way fans. So far, so good. Are you guys having fun? There we go, more Wave Soccer coming up. We have an amazing halftime show for you as well, live from the UW-Milwaukee Panther Arena. We'll be right back. Coming up next on MASL Primetime, San Diego was flying high against the Baltimore Blast in an east-west showdown. Heavyweights traded punches as Florida visited Milwaukee and overtime was needed to decide things once again. Ontario's red hot play continued as they pulled a shocker and Justin Stinson of the Fury joins us to talk about what's helped them turn things around after a slow start. It's all coming up next on MASL Primetime. MASL Primetime. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Alex Bastiavansky. The East-West Interconference Games continued last weekend, and on the schedule was uh, one of the most highly anticipated contests of the season. San Diego and Baltimore are two of the most successful franchises in the history of the arena game, but while the Soccers have been their usual dominant selves thus far, the same can't be said about the Blast. They've uh, really lacked the consistency that's led to them being MASL champs three of the last four seasons. The last time these two squads went toe-to-toe -to -toe was back on January 25th. Baltimore triumphed in a physical contest where tempers flared, so San Diego was looking for revenge in the rematch. Highlights in this segment are brought to you by Miter Soccer. Miter is the official soccer ball of the MASL. While San Diego's comfortably in second spot at West, Baltimore is clinging to the fourth and final playoff spot in the East. No scoring until the second quarter. Taylor Bond bangs in the rebound there to give San Diego the lead. Less than two minutes later, Mohamed NJ sneaks it past Boris Pardo to make it a 1-1 soccer game. Second half, now the ball pops right to Craig Childs and the San Diego soccer's all-time leading scorer Heads it home, pays the price in the process, but he'd be okay. Case in point, three minutes later, Childs feeds Brian Farber, and he pads their lead to two goals, and then one of the goals of the week. Hiram Ruiz on his bicycle. I mean, this one, absolutely gorgeous. He gets up for it and knocks it in. Stunning. San Diego takes the rematch as they avenge their earlier loss to the Blast, and they cruise, and this one to the 5-1 win, but they ran into one of the hottest teams in the league, the Ontario Fury. Winners of four straight, 2.59 in, Justin Stinson converts the sweet pass from Juan Topete. One zip for the home side. Late in the first, the soccer's player gets chopped down, so a penalty kick is called. Chris Toth stops Brandon Escoto, but Slava Yu is there to put home the second chance, so they were all tied up 1-1. 
Second quarter, Ontario takes the lead and never looks back. Macon the Abreu making it 2-1 for the Fury. And then it's time for Frank the King to take over. Frankie Tayu smashes in the Jesus Pacheo pass to extend the lead to 3-1. It stayed that way until the fourth quarter where Frank just continues to shine, splitting the wickets here on Pardo. And it's 4-1 Ontario. San Diego getting one back. Leo de Oliveira going bar down to cut the deficit to two goals. But Juan Carlos Gonzalez annihilates the poor miter ball with that shot. That made it 5-2. Keep your eye on the Fury down the stretch. They've won six of their last seven after a slow start. Frank Tayu loved his team's effort. You know, we knew we had to make a statement win. Obviously, we came out and we beat uh, Mesquite 7-0, but uh, we challenged ourselves for this one. And uh, so hopefully we can keep rolling on this. Uh, but we can, we can build off this game. Okay, Dallas hosting Eastern Power Utica, and they gave them all they could handle to the sidekicks. Freddie Mugin, a member of Canada's national futsal team, he gets things started for Dallas. 2.25 in, poking it past Andrew Coughlin, and then Luis DeAndre does it all himself, putting it in. Could an upset be a Bruin? Uh, Moises Gonzalez responds for Utica, though, smashing the shot past. Juan Gamboa, second quarter, the Blues equalize. Bo Yelovac to Liam Callahan. Nothing Gamboa could do about that. 2-2, fourth quarter, with the score tied, Andre has a penalty, which he converts to make it 7-6, but in the dying seconds, Jake Schindler ties it up for Utica. This one went to a shootout. Uh, this is Utica's only goal, but it was all they would need, as it turned out. Dallas couldn't make a single tally past Andrew Coughlin. So UCFC getting pushed to the limits in this one, but they do escape with the win. Coughlin shared his thoughts afterwards. Yeah, uh, we knew today was going to be a grind, and uh, obviously Dallas was fresh, and, and they gave us their best game, and it was definitely hard for us, and uh, we just good lucky to get the win. Okay, let's take a look at your MASL point leaders. Here we are through 13 weeks of play. Leo Gibson still on top with 45, followed by Enrique Canez and Frank Tayu tied with 40. Vinny Dantas, Nick Pereira tied with 38, and Michael Ramos, 37. Welcome back to MASL Primetime. Last season, the Milwaukee Wave captured the Ron Newman Cup, and a big reason why was their dominance at home. Panther Arena was really like a fortress for the Wave as they lost just a single game there. This season, however, home hasn't been quite so sweet. The Wave had already lost three games there heading into Week 13, including an overtime encounter against the first place Florida Tropics. Well, FLA was in town once again last Sunday, and the two squads combined for another classic. These two squads have had some epic battles this season, and this contest was no exception. No scoring until the second quarter. Andrew Wideback makes it 1 0 for the wave. Victor Pereiras responds for the Tropics, dialing long distance, hammers it. 1 1. Ian Bennett working his magic here, though, turning. Gordy Gerson inside out, and how about this finish? Take another look at it. Boom, top shelf past the keeper. 2-1 Milwaukee, back and forth they went, trading punches like a couple of prize fighters. Guillermo Dos Santos evens it up again. Second half, FLA takes its first lead. Lucas Texera, one-time perfection, makes it 4-3. Fourth quarter, Tropics up 5-4 at this point. Sir Alex Bradley tying it up. This one needed overtime to get settled. Chino, Chino, got past Ruggles. Chino trying to come in on the break. He comes in, shot and a goal! Angel Curio is Chino! Great call by announcer Tom Wynn. What a game it was. Okay, Mesquite hosting Tacoma. 
Victor Eliquay draws first blood with an absolute screamer from in tight there past Danny Waltman. They'd add to that lead big time in the second quarter. Cody Ellis leaving Waltman no chance. 2 nothing outlaws. And then the love machine, Jamie Lovegrove, hitting Jose Maria Otizi, making it three zip mesquite. They weren't done. Sean David, spectacular rush here. The home side going up by four goals heading into the fourth quarter of play. Douglas Lima breaking the shutout here, though, putting it off the post and in. But on this day, it was all mesquite as they take down the Stars by a 5-2 final score. Tacoma also visited the sidekicks on their Metro Dallas adventure and with the score tied 1-1. Freddie Mooge in the sweet redirection out front and then showing off his best Spider-Man impression. Michael Ramos had a huge game for Tacoma. He deposits the Alessandro Canali feed to knot things up. And in the second half, more Ramos. Little shimmy and shake here, and then he rips the twine. Spectacular. Was he done? Heck no. Ramos smashing the miter ball past Juan Gamboa. That made it 4-2 for Tacoma. They'd go up 5-2, actually, but uh, Dallas had a late rally. This Freddie Mugin tally drew them to within a goal, but the sidekicks would run out of time as they lose another one-goal game. This time to the Stars, who triumph. 5-4. to four. Okay, the I-70 battle resumed last week. KC hosting St. Louis. Lucas Almeida gets the visitors on the board first. Just 335 in. Kevin Ellis had a huge game for the Comets, though. He converts the pass from Kyle Williams to knot it up at one apiece. With St. Louis leading 2-1 in the second quarter. Ellis back at it. Smashes a beauty past Paulo Nascimento. And it's 2-2. They kept going back and forth for a while. Dudica Carvalho, one of the goals of the week. A screamer. Top shelf pass, Nicola Neto. Uh, Gui Gomez responds for KC, splitting the wickets on Nascimento. And that was part of a run of four straight goals for the Comets. Adam James banks it in off the far post to give them their first lead of the contest. They would end up pulling away in the end taking down the ambush by a 10-6 count in front of a good crowd in KC. See, okay, the Blast was looking to get back on track after that loss to San Diego. They were in tough against Harrisburg, though. Up one nothing. Tony Donatelli makes it a two-goal bulge. Out of the second quarter, Dom Francis hammers a one-timer past William Van Zela to make it 2-1. With the score tied 3-3 in the third quarter, Jamie Thomas gives the Blast back the advantage. Once again, though, Harrisburg refusing to lie down. Tavoy Morgan falling down, still making it happen, though, and it was a 4-4 soccer game. Finally, the Blast delivered the death blow. Vinny Dantas with what would prove to be the game winner as Baltimore finishes strong and take down Harrisburg 7-4. Came Mesquite hosted Eastern Power Utica City. Moises Gonzalez was just absolutely on fire in this one for the Blues. 2.39 in, the gorgeous one-timer, making it one nothing for the visitors. But then Utica getting its pocket picked right here. Bradley Balades saying thank you very much. Back to Gonzalez though, wide open on the four side. That makes it 2-1. And then Nate Bordeaux hammers home the second chance here and Utica's lead is now 3-1. Bo Yelovach so tough to contain. Two goals on the day for the big man, this being the nicest. What a touch. Mesquite had a late push, but it wasn't enough to make up the difference as UCFC take this one by a final of eight to five.
Hang on, I I forgot to turn these up. Uh, we're here. There's the score, 4-3, St. Louis Ambush leading the Milwaukee Wave. As we get ready to start the third period, Tom went along with former Wave team captain Tenzin Rampa. Well, Tenzin, there was no lack of entertainment value in that first half, that's for sure. We saw a little something of everything. Uh, what would you say the perspective is on either side here heading into the second half? Yeah, you know, I always listen to Coach Oliviero right before, you know, the halftime break. And one of the things he had mentioned is, you know, don't let frustration set in. If you're the wave, you're the better team, right? Don't get caught into these physical altercations. That's the kind of game that St. Louis is looking to make right now, an energetic, physical battle. What we've got to do right now, pass, move, right? Get into your offense. You know, don't let frustration settle in. Your reactions to situational stuff, right, can sometimes manifest in your play. So, you know, keep cool heads and play your game. All right, underway here in the third quarter. Ambush in the white uniforms, they go right to left. Joey Capinos chipping out to midfield. Chino tried to head it ahead for Ian Bennett, but play broken up by the Ambush. Well, there's no question the Ambush played with a bit of an edge in the first half. We'll see if they can keep it going in the second half. Thomas off the inboard in front. Oh! Felipe had a golden opportunity but couldn't convert. Mm. Ambush at 8 and 10 coming in. 3 and 6 on the road. The wave at 11 and 4. 5 and 3 at home. And here I say, if this goes down to the wire again today and we end up going to overtime, we've already had four of our five overtime games at home this year. Keep in mind, the Wave, the most overtime games ever played at home in a season was back in 92-93 in a 40-game season. They had four at home, three on the road, and I believe we lost them all that year. Keith, those was the first year. As Keith said, that was diabolical. Yeah, you know, <laughs> after laying it all on the line in an indoor game and losing it over time is just is heartbreaking. So it's, it's good that last game against the KC Comets, we were able to come out. Huge game there and a huge result hanging in the balance here. KC getting ready to kick it off against the Ontario Fury a bit later on as uh, they tend to the... Injured players, Max took a bit of a spill there. Hopefully he's okay, and then somebody still down that. Oh, Jonathan Santos, our old buddy Jonathan, took a bad one there. Like we talked about, Tenzin, he, he's been an excellent pickup for St. Louis. Uh, really helped stabilize their defense there a bit. And uh, Yeah, good good point. And I think, you know, he, he brings really valuable experience in the back, something that we know the championship teams here need. The other player they're missing a little bit today is Pablo. I right, saw good. Pablo warming up around the outside. Hey, unfortunate for them that they don't have him because he's, a, he's definitely a calming presence in the back defensively, and he can get in the attack on these set pieces as well. Yeah, no doubt. A 39-year-old who spent six seasons with the Wave and was a very solid contributor on a couple of championship teams from Milwaukee back in 11 and 12. Uh, now in his third year with St. Louis, and uh, he's had a good year so far. Talking about Pablo, nine games, five goals, 12 assists. And again, just another guy who really reads the game well out there when he's out on the field. So Jonathan getting up, rubbing his head. Again, hopefully he's going to be okay. Doggy rave with the wave today. I, I'd say Tenzin uh, got to be, I don't know, 15, 20 dogs maybe hanging out down below us here. Yeah, see a German Shepherd, see a Beagle. I don't see a New Finland though. My friend Craig has a New Finland, 190 pounds. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if You'd have to fit. buy a couple of tickets to get him a bit. <laughs> Nascimento, just enough touch on it to play it away. Apollo again come up with some big saves for the ambush. You know, his his numbers 
haven't been overwhelming because St. Louis hasn't been the greatest defensive team over his his career. But uh, I'll tell you, he is. We've seen him enough times to no, know he is a very impressive goalkeeper. Absolutely, very dynamic keeper as well. Dramatic saves, good with his feet. Yeah, not afraid to jump in the attack when they need. In fact, a lot of times they really don't have to go with a full sixth attacker. Paulo is so skilled as a field player, they can just implement him as an extra attacker, which they did the other night against Ontario. Well done by the Wave to start working it out into the zone here. Well done. Bradley turns up for Hoffman. Trying to play it up ahead for Wittebach pass block. Koyakov coming on. Vadim Koyakov. Save made enough to slow it down by Kapitos. Hey, and that's got to be a blue right And a there. blue follow-up card. What in the world, Anthony Grant? Yeah, no reason for that. Yeah, just really late that time on Chino. Chino, well done to drop back in and protect your goalie right there. Watch this save by Capinos, just enough. And then Anthony Grant. Well, it, it, was, it, it wasn't heinous. It, was, it wasn't trying to grill him into the goal, but uh, boy, just not good contact there by Anthony. Yeah, it looked like he might have slipped. Still a dangerous situation nonetheless. So here we go with the power play. First power play play the night for either team and it comes at 228 of the third period wave has been pretty good on the power play this year 21 of 37 56 point eight percent the ambush haven't exactly been a juggernaut in penalty killing they've killed off 17 to 37 for 45 point nine percent so they haven't been at 50 percent we'll see if the wave can take advantage LSO turn his shot go in off the defender Luan Salas Oliveira with his eighth power play goal of the season. And Milwaukee back to even at four apiece. And I love that decision from Luan. An early, decisive decision to spin, turn, and shoot to the back post. What that does to a, a, a man down defense is creates so much stress, right? The keeper's got to make a save. The defenders get turned around. We have an opportunity at the back post with Ian Bennett. So, so many positives come from just that decision to shoot right there alone. On his right foot, nonetheless. Well done, Luan. Goal number 18 on the year. And it deflected in off the defender. But it's still count nonetheless. Eighth power play goal for Luan. He is second in the league only to his teammate, Ian Bennett, who has nine. So let's see if Milwaukee can capitalize on the momentum. They have not been able to score back-to-back -back goals so far today. We see Vega defending the ball side on St. Louis right here, trying to prevent him getting that ball. I tell you, it almost looked like Koyakov caught one off the forearm there as that came in. A double old goal if there's such a thing. One other game going on in Utica halftime. It was uh, the Comets leading four to two last we checked over the Rochester Lancers. And we'll see if Rochester still has some uh, staying power after last night's overtime loss at home to the Baltimore Blast. Lancers still looking for their first win. Utica 12 and three going into that one in second place. And nice job by the defense to hold there after a double pass off the restart. Thomas will chase it down. And Thomas, for a big guy, has excellent speed. Much better than you'd think. In the middle, Chino! <laughs> oh, and Nascimento just able to get there. I don't know if that was going to sneak inside the frame or not, but it was a great effort by Chino. Yeah, it was the right decision, too. Good soccer IQ right there from Chino. Maybe expecting the goalie on his back and catch him on the flick, but uh, Nascimento read it well. Pachar knocks it away with the Duca. Now Pachar trying to cut inside, fires a shot. Capinos is down on that one. And again, the pace continues to be frantic here. Play on, says the ref. Play on. Bradley turning uh -huh. shot, just missed it. Alex with that big left foot. And meanwhile, I believe that's Isaac Pereira, I think, who is down on the play. 
Yeah, it was a foul, no doubt, but you got to let him play on right there. You got Alex Bradley, 1v1, and the ball in his left foot. Take a look one more time on the Wisconsin Vision instant replay. Oof. <laughs> and Santos just crunching his former teammate, Isaac Pereira. Update from Utica now 5 2, Utica City FC over the Lancers. Kansas City hosting Ontario. That game will start in about 35 minutes. Same thing, Dallas hosting San Diego. Then later tonight, 4 o'clock Central Time, it is Harrisburg against Baltimore in a match with huge playoff interpictions for those two teams in the Eastern Conference. That'll be a great game right there, Tom. No doubt. Now, Baltimore playing their third and three, although they did rest some people last night in Rochester, but that's going to be a test for them for sure. Harrisburg uh, won 11-8 last night at home to the Orlando Seawolves. It was actually 9-3, to three, so perhaps that game not as stressful as, uh, as it turned out to be. i got to believe the Heat was trying to save a few legs for today mm. late in that contest. We will see Orlando here Saturday, March 7th at 6.07 p.m. Sunday, March 8th at 1.07 p.m. Back-to-back -back games at Panther Arena. Go to MilwaukeeWave.com for tickets and information. MilwaukeeWave.com, your source for everything Wave. You can also call the Rock Ventures Wave Milkman office at 414-224-WAVE. But next weekend, it's off to California for the Wave. Saturday night in San Diego, that's leap day nights. 9 o'clock game central time against the Sockers. Max, back for LSO. He cranks one up! And a save made, but we get a foul in the follow-through as LSO shaking up. Boy, the ambush again, just continuing to rack up the fouls. Yeah, and Wave doing a little bit better job this half of not allowing the double to come in and win the ball. So finding that opening player off the double. I think it might have been actually Jonathan Bachar who got called for the foul on Max before the shot was taken. All right, restart, restart the situation here for Milwaukee. Ian with space here. Let's see, LSO! Oh! <laughs> Rough tap service! Milwaukee leads it 5-4! Just feeling it, bending shot into the upper corner. And you know, you get, you think, you know, your teams are gonna be worried about Ian Bennett stepping into that left foot. Maybe you've just opened up a little extra window for Luan right there. So, hey, right, credit to him for a great finish. Big time finish. Return address guaranteed on that one. Look where that ball ended up. And Milwaukee takes its first lead of the game at five to four. LSO with the power play at 250 to tie it at four. LSO with the restart goal at 503 to put Milwaukee up 5-4. And that's indoor soccer right there if you're a goalie. It's a game of fractions, seconds and inches. Had Nascimento had his hands up a little higher, maybe he would have deflected that a little uh, up off the post there. So well done, Luan. Almeida trying to center it, ball deflected out. Top of the arc, restart, ambush. All right, Pepe on the ball. He will step over. Now Almeida will... A little confusion there. And the shot saved by Capinos and a foul on the ambush. Not sure what St. Louis is trying to do there. They only had one guy down low, four guys up top. <laughs> that has to be one of the... Uh, more chuckling restarts uh, initially, I think I've seen. I thought it was a trick play at first <laughs> because there was nobody down low right or left. <laughs> Pachar showing off a little razzle-dazzle there. Souza keeps the zone to the end board. Pachar smothered by Chino. It comes through. Oof. Shot misses by Souza. Wow. Opportunity out of nothing for the ambush. Now Souza drives it in, it comes across. Get out, get out. Almeida trying to get past Grable. Souza, top of the area on the way, clears it. it. 
Now Santos with a drive blocked by Chino. And finally cleared downfield by the wave. They have given an assist to Max Ferdinand on the game tying goal by LSO. Third of the day for Max, number 23 on the year. And well deserved on that one. But LSO's last goal, obviously, unassisted right off the free kick. Capinos getting pressure. Oh, and Matthew Yang did well just to redirect that the other way. That thing was coming at him 100 miles an hour. Danny Maria with it. Danny, as we said, he's he got some shiftiness out there. Yeah, he's one of those guys with a light frame, quick on his feet, just a nightmare to mark. As long as he buzz, he'll be fine in this league. Danny had a walk of shot, Wisconsin, played his high school ball at North High School. Now up to Bradley, battling for position along with Souza, who got called for the foul, wave with a quick restart, and the shot by Yang cleared out. Superstructure violation as it hits the video board, and Milwaukee will take the free kick at the line. <laughs> and Alex Bradley just telling that defender, hey, do you want my shirt? Do you want my shorts? Hey, I've been hitting the weight room right there. <laughs> Alex, Alex can certainly handle the physical part. Boy, Souza just flying there. There you go. We'll move to LSO, now back for Max. Max with a goal and three assists today, had it poked away, but LSO fortunately gonna be back to get it for Milwaukee. Five to four. You can feel the intensity in this one today, fans. Max off the end board, and deflected away as Sousa shrugging off LSO to get it. There are some bodies going at each other on the turf here in Milwaukee. Wave pressuring deep and... Good help from Vega. Vega now. ready to play. Big play there. Milwaukee had four people back in the defensive end and the ambush cleared the pressure. But fortunately, Vega there to clean it up. We will take a break. Don't go anywhere, fans. Still got a long way to go in this one and it is rocking today. Milwaukee 5, St. Louis 4. This is Wave Soccer and MASL TV. We had a vision of creating a sports medicine program from the grassroots level, from peewees to the pros. At Midwest Orthopedic Specialty Hospital, we are taking care of athletes and getting them back on the field. Over 80% of the patients that come to see us for sports-related injuries do not need surgery. That really surprises people. We can relate to our patients because many of us have been there. Athletes like to say they give 110%. Well, guess what? So do we. We are Dental Associates, a passionate team dedicated to providing care for your entire family. From a simple cleaning to braces, Invisalign, wisdom teeth removal, dentures, and dental implants, we conveniently do it all. Best of all, we're a family-owned business headquartered in Milwaukee. Our team members are Wisconsin families like yours with the mission to improve lives beyond dentistry. Contact us today to schedule your next appointment. We are dead. And there's our buddy Ron. I think he's 88 years young, Ian, but uh, still uh, here to see the wave. Wave owner Mike Zimmerman down there in the area behind the goal. Always having fun down there. That's the place to be. That's a place to watch games. <laughs> I've, you know, for Not years, a bad seat in here, but that's a place to be. For years, Tenzin, I've been trying to see if we could do a broadcast from down there. Oh, that would be awesome. That would be something, huh? So maybe we uh, maybe we get that done someday. That would really be something. All right, ambush with it as they put it in play, and they do get it out to midfield. Good sliding tackle there by Vega to stop Nemasi as he was going forward. Santos with it. Jonathan against his former team today. Nemasi comes forward. Almeida moves it across. Now Anthony Grant to the corner. Grant has a couple of goals today for the ambush. 
fact, he scored their last two of the first half that put them up four to three at halftime. Since then, LSO has answered with a pair for Milwaukee here in the third quarter. St. Louis knocking it around. Definitely the most extended possession of this quarter. And now San Luis coming in, shot and a goal. Wave just could not get it out of there. And San Luis, who is definitely making an impact in today's game with his second goal of the day, and we're back to even at five. Yeah, San Luis just taking, yeah, identifying that Chino is in a dangerous situation right there, trying to build out of the back with his back to the large part of the field. Puts him under pressure and a nice little one-two. Good finish. One more time on the replay. Got it right there. Chino with kind of a missed touch. Almeida will get the assist. As San Luis ties it up at 9.02 of the third period. Ferdinand with a shot, knocked down. Boy, momentum in this game has been elusive. Off the end board, shot and goal! Grable sets up Ian Bennett! And the way back on top, 6-5. Great response, I love that sequence right there. Max with a nifty move to break the double team, opting to shoot near post. Stuart Grable catches it on, he says, oh, I'm not going near, I'm going end board, and finds Ian Bennett for the tap-in. Well done, Stuart. And so just like that, the wave back on top, six to five. Kind of reverse of what we saw in the first half with the ambush answering quickly after the wave would score. Now Milwaukee able to do the same here. Bennett with his 32nd of the season. He's got a goal and assist today. 37 points total this year and Stuart Grable with the assist. Now, one, one of the things the guys told me in the locker room, I said, hey, what'd you think about the KC game? He said, hey, we wish we could keep the lead, keep the lead and build on the lead. So at 6-5 here, can the wave pull away? Still a long way to go in this one. Daduka's turning shot blocked by Huffman. Bob to the middle, Bradley and Pereira both there trying to clear, and Alex finally able to dump it downfield. Felipe gets there, back to the goalkeeper. Now he will try and play it out for Santos new time. Played up into the stands, and that's going to be out of bounds to the wave. So the wave outscoring the <clears throat> ambush 3-1 thus far here in the third period. Don't forget, it's on Wisconsin night with the band on hand, Saturday, March 7th, Wave's next home game at 6.07. Off the end board in front, as Hain was looking for Matty Yang, but couldn't quite make the connection. Jonathan Pachar comes away with it. Pachar has been uh, active here in the third period today, for sure. Santos trying to get around Hain. He plays it off the end board in front. Shave Capinos! San Luis trying to follow up. Got to wrap up here. You see Otemea. Yeah, great job there by Kane to clear the zone. Got to make a point real quick here on Ian Bennett's goal. You know, several players, especially Pepe in particular, a great opportunity to wrap up Ian Bennett in the box. It cost KC the game the other night with Chad Vandergriff left wide open in the box as Sosa sank back in that goal, allowing him a lefty-driven ball right there. Pepe that time not wrapping up Ian. Ball's back in the net. Stuart Grable picked up his uh, first assist of the year on that goal by Bennett to put the wave on top, six to five. Stu now with three points. He's got a couple of goals and an assist this year. Grable actually scored one of his goals right here against the Ambush last time we were here. That was the first goal of the night for Milwaukee at that point, which made it a 3-1 game in favor of St. Louis. Ambush eventually went up six to one. Wave stormed back with six straight goals to make it 7-6 before the Ambush tied it up with 19 seconds to go in regulation. And then won it in OT on the goal by Felipe a couple minutes in. Here's Ian Bennett trying to get to it. But a nice job there by Almeida to prevent any further damage for St. Oh, Louis. Max touch. coming in, Max coming in, Max with a shot to go! <laughs> what a goal by Max! 
And I think that's going to be Murillo on the assist. We got a double check. Somebody had a beautiful back heel touch to get it to him. Yeah, you know, and, and it's a great finish for Max. That play starts with Matthew Net Yang not allowing Otamea to turn. Danny Murillo. Danny Murillo will get the assist at 11.30 of the third period. Max is having a game today. Two goals. Now 14 on the year. He's also got three assists. 37 points, which ties him with Ian Bennett for the team scoring leadership. And that puts both in the top 10 in the league. Boy, Danny Murillo picking up the point there on the assist. Danny had at least one point earlier this year. Let's double check that. The man from Waukesha North High School. What oh, a great sliding tackle there by Isaac to break it up. Now Kim's back out and the shot by Grant. Stopped by Capinos. You know, another great thing about that goal right there is, hey, you create a chance from your defense. Something that you're going to need in the playoffs, right? That stifling defense can oftentimes lead to great goal scoring opportunities. That time well done by Max. Danny Murillo, by the way, well, that's his second assist of the year, and he's also got two goals for four points. So Danny, despite the fact that he has uh, only played in three games, one goal, three assists for Murillo this year, he's definitely proven he can uh, rack up some points when he's in there. Again, the young guys this year from Milwaukee have just really been a, a, a key part, not only the way of this year, but going forward tends to get a lot of valuable experience that gonna gonna bode well for this wave team going forward. LSO coming out of the back, tried to play it far side, moved up ahead. Ian walking in, Ian got it! Save made Nascimento. He was very close to being outside the area. Kane. Still alive here. Bennett, Ian! Shot of the He is a scoring machine. There is no other way about it. What a finish after being denied initially. 8-5 Milwaukee. Well, they call Frank Tayu the king out in Ontario, but he was, this is the guy that who would succeed him, the man who would be king otherwise, Ian Bennett. 184 goals in the last three plus seasons and we got a player down for the wave at midfield and looks like a lot of concern here. Time the goal for Bennett at 12.53. Andre Hain had the assist. Ian with his second of the game. This is second this period, number 33 on the season. Hain, who had a goal taken off the board earlier today in the first half, gets the assist. And Andre, again, continuing to be extremely productive since coming off the reserve list, the forced reserve list, if you will, a couple of weeks ago. Gets his second assist of the season, total of five points now in four games for Andre Hain. And we're still trying to figure out who's down there for the wave. Yeah, you know, at 8-5 wave, as we spoke about before, able to build a three-goal lead now. Can we sustain it and put away this team? Game still pretty wide open at this point. And one thing about the ambush, if they've proven several times this year, they uh, do not get intimidated being down in the game score-wise. Uh, relentless uh, go-forward attitude for the ambush. So you better believe they, they are not uh, hanging their heads just about yet. No, and if you're the wave, you know that. And then also, if you're the wave, you know, this is where you rely on your leaders to see the game out, right? Dictate the pace of the game. Don't get into chippy little fouls. Pass and move, right? Don't let them, don't let the pressure get to you.
Hopefully he's all right. Do you know who's down there? No, we're still trying to. Uh, oh, was somebody for the ambush? Looks like Santos. Jonathan maybe. Santos. So you can understand why all the wave guys were especially concerned. He was their teammate for the past several seasons. They got traded to St. Louis in early January. And, uh, oh, Jonathan uh, getting some help as he comes off the field. We see uh, wave goalkeeper Rafa Diaz also helping his friend Jonathan off. And Jonathan Sastos, of course, a longtime player for the Wave, very popular player for the Wave Tenzin. Of course, you played with him for many years. And yep. Uh, just a good guy and certainly uh, was a great player for us. And I hate to see anybody get hurt, especially him. Tough as nails, plays with a lot of raw motion, very skilled player. You know, there's a reason why, you know, a player like that is, you know, sometimes on the ground is because he's always, you know, he's always willing to challenge the ball. So I got all the respect for John. So again, we hope right. John is going to be okay. And, uh, I would say based on that, it doesn't look like he'll be back in the game today, but but hopefully uh, it does not turn out to be a, a major injury. Here we go. Pepe Jankura making it into the zone for San Luis, being marked by Derek Huffman. Latter portion of the third period, long bomb there by Souza off the mark. Bradley pushing up ahead. He's trying to go two on one with Izak. Alex now to Pereira, and that will turn and play it back out. Well done by the wave. There it is, Vega. Good decision. Pull him out of the defense. With Pepe keeping an eye on him, he'll drop it back for Joey Capinos. Now, Joey has certainly heated up a bit here, shot stopping wise in the third quarter. Bradley with a back heel and a good save there by Nascimento. Oh, nice effort there by Alex Bradley. We've seen him scoring a couple of back heels in the box. That was that would have been the long range back heel conversion right there. Yang with it now. Matty, another young guy who is really had some major contributions for the way of this year. Jankura off the end board, but Ian's got it covered back over there. And here comes Ian. Starting the rush upfield. He's two on three, three on three. Pitting in. Ian coming across. Ian with a shot of goal! <laughs> a run from the ages for Ian Bennett! And Milwaukee leads at 9-5! You know, what, what an amazing run. Great finish, but if you're St. Louis and you're Everton, you gotta be kicking yourself because you've got multiple opportunities right there to keep Ian from coming into the larger part of the field off of his right foot, which he's already scored twice that way. You know, just doesn't make sense okay. as a defender to me. Koyakov and Yahich are just gonna cringe when they watch this tape. That was almost Houdini-like. Absolutely, and, you know, and nothing from Ian's goal. What a great run to keep his legs moving and you know create separation in the, in the midfield like we know he can do. But if you're a defender, you know who Ian Bennett is. Well, the ambush and the Comets have had a lot of years to watch Ian work his magic. <laughs> he's, yeah, he's, he shouldn't be sneaking up on him. Either of those two teams, that's for sure. That play felt like it went on for, you know, two days. <laughs> <laughs> they will restart it after the foul against the Wave. Milwaukee on a four-goal run with 13.4 seconds left to go here in the third period. Thomas Wrap fires up. in off the end Wrap board! Up. And Yamasi could not convert! Cleared out, and that will do it for the third quarter. Boy, what a turnaround by the Wave in the third. They outscore St. Louis six to one. Crowd is on its feet. Dogs are on their feet. Milwaukee nine, St. Louis five. We're coming back with the fourth quarter. This is Wave Soccer and MASL TV.
way to explore the world. My way is to push myself and never take the easy road. I prefer a road that winds through forests and goes up mountains because I've always been an adventurer at heart. That's why I can't wait to be a scout. Because scouting will guide me to great things. It won't just teach me to navigate the woods with confidence, but it'll give me the confidence to navigate the world. I'll enter the scouts as the best version of myself today and will grow into the best version of myself for my future. Scouting will show me how to use bravery, trustworthiness, loyalty, and kindness to become a person I'm proud to be. Because there's no one way to explore the world, and my way is in the scouts. So, so scout, scout me, me in. in. Vision. See more life. We had a vision of creating a sports medicine program from the grassroots level, from peewees to the pros. At Midwest Orthopedic Specialty Hospital, we are taking care of athletes and getting them back on the field. Over 80% of the patients that come to see us for sports related injuries do not need surgery. That really surprises people. We can relate to our patients because many of us have been there. Athletes like to say they give 110%. Well, guess what? So do we. We are Dental Associates, a passionate team dedicated to providing care for your entire family. From a simple cleaning to braces, Invisalign, wisdom teeth removal, dentures, and dental implants, we conveniently do it all. Best of all, we're a family-owned business headquartered in Milwaukee. Our team members are Wisconsin families like yours with the mission to improve lives beyond dentistry. Contact us today to schedule your next appointment. Some of my best memories growing up were cooking with mom. She always said, food is love. So when she moved in with us, a new kitchen became part of our financial plan. There was a dream. I want to make the most of every meal we have together. At Northwestern Mutual, our version of financial planning helps you live your dreams today. Find a Northwestern Mutual advisor at nm.com. We come to the fourth period here in Milwaukee. You look at the wave bench, and uh, I would have to believe Tenzin Rampa, a much more... Uh, enthusiastic way bench after forging out to this 9-5 lead by outscoring the, the ambush 6-1 in the third period. Not that they were, you know, down in the dumps necessarily after trailing 4-3 at halftime, but Yeah, absolutely. I, I like the mindset, you know. You didn't see many players you know, harping on each other, getting on the referee. Here we go with a little takeaway okay. there. You know, going into the fourth right now at 9-5, if you're the wave, the mindset has got to be make St. Louis chase. Connect seven, eight, nine, ten passes. Every possession, they've got to earn it. In the middle, kick save! And we got a handball after that on Lucas Almeida. Wow, what a stop by Capinos. Anthony Grant looking at the hat trick. 95% opportunity and what a step by Capinos. Now, like I said, Joey has really heated up with the shot stopping here in the second half. Bradley, back heel, Ian coming in, number four! What a goal, what a ball from Alex Bradley. Just perfectly weighted in his stride. It's the I-plus show here in the second half. His fourth of the afternoon. Bradley with a brilliant assist. 29 seconds into the fourth period. Yeah, you know, we mentioned Ian and we mentioned Alex on the layoff, but how about Capinos' absolute dart of a throw distribution right on Alex's foot? One touch. I don't think you can draw it up any better than that. 
No, you sure could. You could not telestrate it better than that, Tenzin. Look at this. On a dime to Bradley. Look at that touch. And look at that finish. Ian Bennett with his 347th goal as a member of the Milwaukee Wave. His previous goal moved him into third all-time, make that second all-time on the Waves goal-scoring list ahead of Greg Howes, the legendary Greg Howes. I'm making my early vote for MASL primetime goal of the year right there. What an assist and the goal. Could be both best assist and best goal. They were both brilliant. Shot blocked, deflects out of bounds. Sir Alex picked up his eighth assist. Wave now on a five goal run. And really looking to see if they can close it out against the ambush, but we still have a lot of time. Almeida drives one in and Andre Hain helping to protect the post along with Capinos. LSO with St. Louis, LSO plays it square. Just past Isaac Pereira. Now Huffman trying to step inside. And eventually the ambush. Yeah, Wave has an ambush on their on their toes right now. High press in their zone. Can they keep them here? And late whistle there as San Louis was uh, leaping Andre Hain. I think Stefan San Louis got the benefit of that call. Andre was just standing there as San Louis jumped up to try to play it with a back heel touch. And it looks like Stefan is shaking up a bit. Well, he's had a great game today for the ambush, and he's he's brought that physical edge as well, like we've seen him in the past. Remember, he wiped out Mario Alvarez last time the team played. And speaking of Mario, uh, his comeback, his rehab work, going fairly well. And uh, I know the coaching staff was hoping might be able to get him back on the field for by the time Orlando rolls into town for that weekend, March 7th and 8th. Remember, you can order your Wave tickets online for either of those two games against the Seawolves, Saturday night, March 7th at 6.07, Sunday, March 8th at 1.07 at MilwaukeeWave.com, your source for everything Wave, MilwaukeeWave.com, or the final home game on March 15th against the Baltimore Blast. I got a feeling that could be an important game for those two teams. So this is what you want if you're the Wave right now, making every possession count, making them chase, spread the field. Every possession, St. Louis has got to, hey, has got to defend the Wave's possession here. Eight, nine, ten passes. Kill this game off. Danny Murillo battling Koyakov there, and the foul going to be called on Danny. Well, a good timely insertion for Danny Murillo in the lineup today. He has... Uh, <clears throat> Definitely made his presence felt out there. Only a rookie as far as playing this year, but uh, Danny, he, he looks like a veteran guy who's been out yeah. there for several years, doesn't he, when he's playing? Just a real solid presence out there. He does, and for me, I love to see younger, newer players take their chance, and that's what we've seen this season from the Wave. Danny Murillo, Andrew Wiedebach having a great season. You know, it's just look good, Matthew Yang. Ali Berry. Ali Berry as well when he's had his chance. Nascimento pushing forward again in the fourth period. Goalkeepers can push past midfield now. Ian Bennett dumped. <laughs> so if you're St. Louis, hey, you know what? That's what you should have been doing all game on Ian Bennett, is follow him early and not allow him ahead of steam, right? I guess it didn't, <laughs> didn't look near, nearly as heinous on the replay. Ian, <laughs> Ian actually kind of saw Felipe coming there. But yeah, Tenzin, I, I think you're right. Without uh, without trying to promote uh, no. <laughs> overly aggressive play. I mean, uh, yeah, I don't Everybody say. watches the games, Every you know, it's, it's just, you know, Okay, essentially a six attacker defense here. Milwaukee had a struggle against the six attackers of Kansas City the other night, but uh, now with a five goal lead, hopefully not as much stress. Grant, he's got a couple goals today. Looking for San Luis, couldn't make the connection. 
Good job by Chino to break it up. Isaac able to stick a leg in there and pursue. Now headed forward by Grable. Ooh. And that was an elbow to the face for sure. Right Isaac there. caught one from the Abasi and they play on. And so no foul going to be called. Anthony Grant will get called for a foul there as he a little late trying to get to the rebound of Capinos. Isaac still holding his uh, face down there. He took one right on the Schnauzer. Here is Andre Hain with a shot kick save made by Nascimento. Tough kid, Isaac, though. You know, he, he's taking a lot of abuse from defenders, and, you know, he's able to, he's pretty durable. All right, 10 43. This was a 4-3 game in favor of St. Louis at halftime. Great to the middle. And Max will pick it back up. Let's see if we can check the updated scores throughout the MASL. Again, plenty of other action going on today. Capinos will find Ian Bennett. He launches long, looking for Huffman, but a little too high. Nascimento has it. Final score from Utica. Utica FC beating the Rochester Lancers 7-2. Two other games just starting in Kansas City. That one comes far side. Oh. Great save by Capinos to Rob Souza. Oh my goodness, Joey Capinos again. Taduka fires high, and Huffman will head it back to his keeper. Did I say Capinos had heated up here in the second half? Wow. Well, we've, we've certainly seen enough from Joey the past couple of games before this one that he can make some spectacular saves. Check out this one to Rob Otomiya Sousa. I can assure you, Sousa already had that one in the bank right there. That was an incredible save right there. <laughs> well, at least once every game we've seen so far, right, yeah. Tyson? He, he has a save that you say, that's save of the year. All right, Lucas Almeida has donned the jersey. He will come on now. Anyway, it's Kansas City hosting Ontario, just kicked off. Dallas and San Diego just kicking off down in Allen, Texas. The Allen Event Center, home of the sidekicks. And then an hour from now, Baltimore and Harrisburg at Farm Show Arena in Harrisburg. I can assure you, the Farm Show will be rocking tonight for that big game. So here we go, six attacker defense, something that gave uh, the Wave some problems against KC here. I would have to believe uh, Coach Oliviero Looking for some improvement here on the sixth attacker defense after the other nights. But that being said, Tenzin, as we've talked about, as that shot just missed, Kansas City torches us more with their sixth attack than anybody else. It's just uncanny the way they take it to the way. Ian Bennett, Ian, of course, one of the greatest empty net finishers of all time. He's got four goals so far today. Let's see if he gets a chance for a fifth. Still got 7.55 to go here in the game. Got to keep it outside of what is the house defense by the Milwaukee Wave. 2-2-1 two, two, with Andre Hain at the top of the house. Don't allow splits. Don't allow penetrating passes. And if that happens, wrap up in the box. No player should be without a Wave player hugging them in the box right there. So no easy finishes. Thomas touches it off. Kick saving a beauty by Capinos. And I believe, is that Pablo out there? Do I see? Uh, no, I don't see Pablo out okay. there. Okay. Because I couldn't remember anybody with pink shoes before. That not looks that, like Pepe. Not that that's Pablo's style. Yeah, I, I don't recall Pepe's through playing with pink shoes, but anyway. Ambush on the extra attack. Almeida 
Taking over for the goalkeeper, Nascimento. JT Thomas converged at top of the box. Capinos again makes a save. That one deflects wide. Hoffman clears the zone. Almeida will get it to avoid the sliding Chino. Now Huffman, good job to play it out for Chino. Little touch near side, but too far for LSO. Got to get on the field quickly. Chino and uh, Kane both go out for a change. Centered on the play, Vega there to sweep it away. And I think we're going to get Derek Huffman right there for a little extra pushing, holding. Shot by Almeida, right on. Capinos. There it is, if Isaac can join him early. Ian, with a little touch, that's going to go wide, and Almeida, good hustle back to get it and clear it away. Ontario's Frank Teo, the league scoring leader with 52 points, then Leo Gibson second with 48. Of course, he is from Kansas City, the player coach. Benny Dantas from Baltimore, now third with 45 points. Benny had a big game on Friday night. <clears throat> against the Orlando Seawolves. You know, d defending this sixth attacker, if you're St. Louis, you're looking to beat the initial front three of the wave and then capitalize on your overload against the back two. Got to do a little bit better job of beating that front three right now. Here you go, got a 5v3, 5v4. Andre Hain able to momentarily break up the attack, but St. Louis still working with it. Ambush will go home to host Kansas City a week from today. That's Sunday, March 1st, as Thomas turns, shoots, and scores. He's got his second of the match. Three players with two goals today for St. Louis, and that one comes at 9.50 of the fourth period. We'll take a break. 5.10 left to go. It's Milwaukee 10, St. Louis 6. This is Wave Soccer and MASL TV. Some of my best memories growing up were cooking with mom. She always said, food is love. So when she moved in with us, a new kitchen became part of our financial plan. There was a dream. I want to make the most of every meal we have together. At Northwestern Mutual, our version of financial planning helps you live your dreams today. Find a Northwestern Mutual Advisor at nm.com. Some of my best memories growing up were cooking with mom. She always said, food is love. So when she moved in with us, a new kitchen became part of our financial plan. There was a dream. I want to make the most of every meal we have together. At Northwestern Mutual, our version of financial planning helps you live your dreams today. Find a Northwestern Mutual Advisor at nm.com. Well, it's called Doggy Rave with the Wave. Saw a couple of dancing dogs before. And uh, here's the dog showcase for today. <laughs> Mixed in with a few little ones. Oh, that's pretty good. 10 to 6. Ambush getting the latest goal. JT Thomas is second in the night, 21st of the year. On the sixth attack for the ambush. They've been using the sixth attacker now for about three minutes. Wave has yet to score against it. Thomas, along with Anthony Grant, along with Stefan San Louis, have done all the goal scoring for St. Louis today. Two Tom. goals apiece for each of those guys. Tom, just had a question come in. Um, so, you know, with it being doggy day in the wave, and you were talking about the farm show arena with Harrisburg, do they have cow day and, <laughs> you know, cattle day? <laughs> <laughs> they, pro they probably they probably should, right? With uh, I think you know who asked that. <laughs> <laughs> I can only imagine. <laughs> Among our core of devoted followers. Oh, nice look there. Huffman coming in three on Back two. Post. There it Plays is. Plays it off and it's shot to go! <laughs> Number five! And the Wave leads 11 6. Oh, great work upfield by the Wave. Huffman with a beautiful square ball to Bennett and Ian put it away. 
And so, Milwaukee able to quell the momentum that St. Louis may have had from the last goal. Time of this at 10-23. Ian Bennett, goal scorer for the ages. You know, the decision making in the overload situations has been great tonight. You know, finding the right pass. You know, Nascimento's come up with a, you know, despite that 3v0 miss that we had earlier on, it's pretty much been spot on for the rest of the night. Shot deflected by Grable in front. The goalkeeper, Capinos, gets it. Now LSL up for Andre Hain at midfield as Almeida, the St. Louis sixth attacker, comes back. Well, remember, Nascimento had been reasserted into the game. I'll bet he's happy about having to go back in there and getting lit up for another goal by Ian Bennett. But you can't blame Everton. I there mean, we go, Chino. Well done. Chino for the empty net. Oh, just missing with the left footer. Wave getting set to head for California. Good. In the middle. And we get a holding foul coming against Chino. That's great defending there by Chino on the sixth attacker. You know, if you're that top right of the house, you've got to go out and pressure and step up and force that play down the boards where Vega can then step up and win that ball. Here we are. Turning well shot, Souza blocks. Again, I'm, I'm sure the Wave coaching staff is, is looking for a good performance on the sixth attacker defense today after not quite what they were hoping for Friday night in Kansas City. And yeah. Penalty against the ambush, apparently. Souza going to go to the box. Yeah, you know, St. Louis losing their heads a little bit. I like what we saw from Vega right there, pulling Chino out of there. Hey, putting his arm around his shoulders and, hey, you know, we got bigger things to worry about right now. That's what you want from a leader, all right, especially one of your veteran backs. Good, excellent point. And Vega going, going over to tell Lord Mia, hey, don't worry, buddy. Won't be the last time you're in the penalty box. Your MASL career. <laughs> Hear me, but tell, look, I've been over there a few times myself. It's yeah, I've been in there too. <laughs> it's it's not the end of the world. Quite a bit. <laughs> they should they should have had you doing those Dunkin' Donuts commercials, Ted's. And, uh, <laughs> You're never supposed to be in there, right? There's always <laughs> something something <laughs> happening against you. Uh, David Pasternak's got nothing on you as far as being a spokesman those situations. Well, wave on the power play. Nascimento comes back in to man the goal for St. Louis. Second power play of the contest. Both of them to Milwaukee. Wave is 1-1. LSO! Sliding down the middle off the pass to Max. Chino with a good job to nudge it back. And eventually Vega will play it back for Capinos. Trip to California, coming up for the wave. Wow, and Ian taking offense to uh, Koyakov. That was kind of a uh, kind of an aggressive uh, leg out by Koyakov against the boards. You could tell the officials immediately stepping in there. Kyle Trimble and Rich Grady, they are not going to let look at this again. Yeah, I mean that's, that's a red card. That's a big time blade by Koyakov. That to me look. should be a red card. Hey, left his feet, two feet. Good. Hey, he's, look, he's looking Good. to hurt him. He's looking to Ab hurt him. Absolutely. Now, again, I, I don't blame St. Louis for as uh, <laughs> they are trying to still separate some of the fellows down there by the St. Louis uh, bench. But I don't blame St. Louis for being a little bit antagonized by Ian. He's been lighting them up today, but there is no call for that. Tenzin. Absolutely not. And it's a good yeah. thing Ian didn't get hurt, and you can tell. Ian is still trying to negotiate here with. You know, that could have gone a lot worse right there. That, that but, was, yes. You know, yes. That's like you could break his leg. Um, 
And Koyakov's got to be looking at uh, potential uh, suspension. Yeah, for, you, you, uh, got, next you got you got 220 le 229 left. I know you want to work on your uh, your power play, but if you see tackles like that coming in, maybe worth it to make a change. <laughs> you know, in personnel, <laughs> just don't give up. I, the, don't give the opportunity. You know. You know, Ian doesn't want to come off the field. Yeah, I, but, I, I get but it. But I but I hear you, Tins, and I I totally 100% agree with you. You do not want to be the wave going forward without. Ian Bennett or Max or LSL or somebody like that. Now you see Jonathan Pachar going over to serve uh, Koyakov's penalty. Although it is a 5v3 now, so yep. maybe you can so, pull a few guys and yeah. you pop this one in here. Yeah, you got to work on your power play. So, you know, I'm not saying, you know, you got to change guys, but, you know, I think, what, 5v3 here? Let's put, let's put this team away, call it a day. It will be two-man advantage for more than a minute if, unless the Wave scores before that. Felipe, Pepe, and Duarte, the defenders. Rich Grady going to say, no, 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 let's bring it back. Restart it again here. Souza and Pachar in the box for St. Louis. Bennett with a shot, looking for number six. Nascimento with the kick save. Wave trying to keep the zone, and, and the ambush, still, I'll tell you, the ambush doing a heck of a job here. Two men down, dude. Thwart the wave. Still got 32 seconds on the two-man advantage for Milwaukee. Max, you essentially have a 3v1 on either side of the field, so we got to convert here. Down low, Chino to Max. Now give the ambush credit for their defending right now. Vega. Oh, Ian had the look. Put it high. 13 seconds left, a two-man advantage. There's a pretty good chance St. Louis is going to kill this off. Yep. Well, I'll tell you, the wave was great in 5v5 situations today, Tenzin. I'm, I'm not so sure on the when we had more than a, a one-man advantage, especially that three against the goalkeeper that we didn't score. But Yeah, you know, I think the big picture, they did something that they've been wanting to do all season is keep the lead and advance the lead and separate, and they've been able to do that against this team. Now short-handed as uh, Ambush are now only one man down for the following 40 seconds. Good job there by Felipe, or rather Pepe, to uh, use up some time. Max with it, looking over to the bench. Double-checking what they want to do, and now maybe they're going to back it out of there. Ian Bennett's still on the field, though. You know, if Ian gets it, he's popping it. <laughs> yeah, he's lost so. another one. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Ian! Great ball by Luan as well. Number six on the day for Bennett. Well, just in case Frank Tayu thought he was running away with the goal scoring race, Ian putting a six pack on the board today. LSL with the assist there. 12-6, Milwaukee. Time of the goal at 14-20. All right, so. Ian Bennett getting congratulations to coaching staff and the retrainer, Ricardo Diaz. The trip to California, Tenzin. It's been on the calendar since well, the start of the season for sure, but I got to believe this is going to be a major challenge for the Wave. Absolutely, and, you know, it'll be very interesting if the Wave can carry this momentum in these last two games. They've been very good these last two games, both defensively and converting attacking-wise. They've been good. Now, it's going to be a whole other ball game against teams like Ontario and San Diego away because, you know, they've, they've gotten to understand everyone's hitting their stride right now. 
And Nascimento says no to Isaac Pereira. That's enough goals today for the Wave, and that will do it. Big win for Milwaukee today as they defeat the St. Louis Ambush by the final score of 12 to 6. And now it's on to California to take on the San Diego Soccers on Saturday, the Ontario Fury on Sunday, and then coming back here to Milwaukee for a back-to-back -back against the Orlando Seawolves on Saturday, March 7th, Sunday, March 8th. Go to Milwaukee.com, MilwaukeeWave.com to order your tickets. You can also call the Wave Milkman Rock Ventures office, 414-224-WAVE to order your tickets as well. Joy Capinos shaking hands with the ambush and St. Louis uh, assistant coach Mark Litton, a goalkeeper in his own right. Ian Bennett, definitely one of the men of the match with six goals today. All six coming in the second half. They flipped the switch on Ian and Feeling it, feeling it for sure. And you know, hey, a lot of guys played well tonight too as well. You know, I thought the decision making was good. I thought the adjustments at halftime, just psychologically, and you know, just able to move the ball, a little bit more patient, it was very good. Yeah, no, good point, Stenson. Uh, spirited effort by the ambush today. And again, credit to their coach, Everton, who you see on the left there. He's done a nice job of building up this team. Might just be, you know, still maybe one or two players short of, of being a playoff team, but I think the future looks bright for them. And uh, hopefully the future near and long term looks bright for the Milwaukee Wave. Let's send it down to Van McNeil talking with Ian Bennett. All right, Tom Tenzin, down here on the field, about to award our Professional Construction Incorporated hardest working player of the game. IB26, Ian Bennett, but there's some discussion here. We got Maxi here as well. One, two, three, four, five, six goals tonight, my goodness. Yeah, no, to be honest though, Max started it off, man. I was honestly, if it wasn't for him at the start, you know, he started it up. I finished it, nice little duo, but now nah, I gotta share with him tonight, man. This guy really helped us in the first half. And then I came through in the second, but it was a team effort, man. We, we just wanted it more, man, and we're, we're trying to get it done. We're at home, baby, and it's my mom's birthday, so you know how to give her a little birthday present. Oh, you got to win on mama's birthday for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we also want to break some news here that you have climbed atop the Milwaukee Wave scoring list into second place now. Uh, with 374 goals. Yeah, it's, it, honestly, it's not about that, though. It's about championships and winning games as a team. All that stuff, that's, that's great and stuff, but as long as you keep winning, that's all that matters. It's all about the team right now. Yeah, that eye on the prize. We want to do this again. We want another championship. Yeah, we got to go back to back, man. This is what we're here. This is what we do. This is what we play. Ian Bennett, our PCI hardest working player of the game, but could not do it without Max Ferdinand, the tag team duo. Maxi, what a game, huh? Yeah, it was definitely a team effort. Thank you guys for coming out. We really appreciate it. Thank you. The goals, the assists tonight, you had a pretty well-rounded game. All right, like I said, it's a team effort, so we'll take this. We definitely, every win now counts, so we try to get every win we can. And what is it like with a guy like Ian Bennett? You guys compliment each other so well. You're assisting him most times. Sometimes he helps you. Yeah, like Ian, he's obviously, he does what he does. And the other guys also, they do their job. Once everybody does their job, make it easier for all of us. Max Ferdinand, ladies and gentlemen, Ian Bennett, Co-players of the game, our PCI hardest working players of the game. We'll send it back up to Tom and Tenz and let's go home, gentlemen. All right, thanks, Van. Thanks, Max. Stacks in as you get a good look at the IMAX tandem posing for the shot there. Post-game autograph session so PCI, coming up here in just a moment. Hardest working players of the game, but uh, could have taken a lot of please, a lot of guys today, Tenz. So, wave at 12 and four, uh, heading out to the West Coast. Um, we'll see how they can do, Tenzin, but like you said, I like their momentum and hopefully they can keep it going. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm look, I love this time of year right now as we get closer and closer to the playoffs because we know the levels just start picking up, picking up, picking up, and, you know, you want to be the best team you can be, right, going into the playoffs because we all know the level just, it just level shifts up and um, can't, can't wait for it. Don't forget, fans, you can check out all the action on MASL TV. 
Starting Saturday night, leap night, Craig Elston, Nate Abarena, a very informative and entertaining broadcast duo. And uh, I got to imagine, Pachenga Arena will be rocking for that game. Waves uh, first visit to either San Diego or Ontario since the 2016 season. And then they have to go back to Ontario on Sunday afternoon, 3 o'clock there, 5 o'clock here for what should be another battle. So make sure to check it all out on MASL TV. Those should be two phenomenal games out there. Our thanks to the great production staff here at Milwaukee Panther Arena and to our producer director Ian Thompson. So for Tenzin Rampa, Tom Wynn wishing you a good one. Once again, our final score, Milwaukee 12, St. Louis 6. We will see you back here on March 7th when the Wave hosts the Orlando Seawolves. Until then, take care. You've been watching Wave Soccer and MASL TV.